lately I realized I've been sharing a lot of really great things that are going on in my life. Paying off our mortgage early, becoming a millionaire family, and transitioning to my dream job full time. While that news is fun to share and can be motivating for a lot of you watching this channel, I think it's also important to share some of my money mistakes as well. That's what the financial journey is all about, right? We're not always hitting big wins all the time. There are a lot of mistakes, but those mistakes can sometimes be the biggest lessons and help us learn a lot. And then there are the mistakes that just really suck and you don't learn anything from them at all. In this video, I'm gonna share five major money mistakes that I've made in my life. Hopefully by sharing these money mistakes, it'll help you avoid them in the future. Hey everyone, this is Andy Hill from Marriage, Kids, and Money, a channel dedicated to helping you strengthen your family tree and live financially free. If you like what you hear today, please give me the YouTube triple thanks. That's hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and then leaving an awesome comment down below. Maybe your favorite money mistake that I made. Anyway, thank you very much. Number one, buying an expensive home I couldn't afford. In 2004, I bought my first home. I was so proud to be a homeowner at 22 years old. Little did I know the true cost of home ownership though. And man, did I learn quickly. When I bought the home, I only put 10% down, so I had some pretty high mortgage payments for a guy only making $38,000 per year. My mortgage payment was around 1200 bucks. When I decided I wanted to switch careers at 23 years old, I took a pay cut of about $10,000. Now, I was only making $28,000 per year. Obviously, I didn't think clearly about my mortgage payment when I made that decision. This uneducated money decision left me with a mortgage payment of around 50% of my monthly income. Add in the housing costs of utilities, repairs, and unanticipated updates, that was about 70% of my income. When all was said and done, I had about 30% of my tiny income to eat, watch Netflix, this is when they were sending the DVDs in the mail, and get a few beers with my friends, maybe. Number two, leasing a luxury car when I am already in debt. A few years and a few new career choices later, I landed myself at a company making around $40,000. With my newfound wealth and a couple of extra roommates to help me pay for my mortgage, I decided it would be smart to lease a luxury car, an Audi convertible. Yeah, man, I leased the four rings when I could only afford one of them. <laughs> I had no business leasing a luxury car because I was in student debt and in debt to my home equity line of credit as well. And my income was not sufficient enough to afford it. Instead of leasing a luxury car, I could have started investing for my retirement with a Roth IRA early in my 20s, maybe reduced my debt, or put some money in savings so I would stop using my home equity line of credit as an emergency fund. Nah, I decided that I needed a luxury car in my mid-20s because it made me look cool. <laughs> That decision, while it was really fun, set me back big time as I headed towards some important moments in my life. Number three, using my student loans to buy my wife's engagement ring. Soon enough, I met the woman of my dreams, my future wife, Nicole, and I wanted her to be my wife right away, but I had no money for the ring. Do you know why I had no money for the ring, everybody? Well, I bought a house I couldn't afford, I decided to go back to school to get my MBA, my master's, and I drove around in a luxury car, all things that I couldn't afford. So did I decide to save up for the ring like a responsible guy or buy a less expensive ring like a responsible guy? No, of course I didn't do that. I decided to drop $5,000 and I used my student loans to pay for it. Not only was I racking up tens of thousands of dollars in student loans for my MBA, but I added on another five grand for Nicole's ring. What a way to start the marriage, huh? Number four, refinancing my mortgage and then moving shortly afterward. After we got married, the value of my home started to plummet during the Great Recession here in Metro Detroit. In 2010, I owned a home valued at $140,000, but I owed $180,000 on it. Whew. That's when I had a lovely negative 
net worth. Fortunately, when 2012 rolled around, the value had risen enough to a point where I owed less on it than it was worth. <sighs> but the money mistake guy was back for more money mistakes. Oh yeah. I decided it was smart to refinance my mortgage so I could lock in a rate of 5%. At the time, I had an adjustable rate mortgage and my rate had dropped down to 2.71% because the LIBOR rate continued to go down at the time. I didn't understand anything about this LIBOR rate or anything that was happening really. It just felt uneasy to me to have an adjustable rate mortgage because it might adjust upward someday. So I refinanced. We ended up losing out on about $13,000 through lost interest payments and refinancing fees. This was a really dumb move. Also, to make matters worse, we decided to sell the home just a year later. It made no sense for us to refinance our mortgage when we were planning to move that soon. This was wasted money. Number five, having blind faith in my financial advisor. Around this same time, I connected with an investment broker who was gonna help us with our investments and our retirement plan. At this point, we were both making some pretty good money as a couple and we needed someone to help us invest it. My blind faith in this individual was a big mistake. At one point, we had saved up $100,000 and we asked him where we should put it if we were considering buying a new home in the next couple of years. He suggested putting it in bond funds because they were a safe investment instead of the stock market. What I didn't understand was that there was a front load fee that dropped our investment balance immediately. Additionally, the bond funds he put us in started to drop in value as well. Our $100,000 that we had in savings had dropped to around $95,000 in just a few months. I should have known not to put any money in the stock market or bond market if I wanted it back in less than five years. But I hoped my advisor would advise me against such things, but it feels like the front load fee was a little more important. <laughs> it was a painful and pricey lesson learned. <sighs> oh man, I feel like I just went through financial therapy talking through all these things with you guys. <laughs> Even though these five money mistakes are upsetting to relive and reshare, I learned so much from all of these experiences. And these lessons have truly shaped the way I approach money now. These major mortgage mistakes made me want to become mortgage free. So we did. The financial advisor blunder made me want to learn a lot more about investing. So I did. And the wasted money on leasing a luxury car made me never want to lease a car again. So we bought both of our cars in cash instead. But these good things, they come with a lot of time and a lot of patience. That's just something in my 20s I didn't have a lot of. <laughs> now, I like to keep things simple, have patience, and realize that good things come with time and education. Enough for me, everyone. I want to hear from you. What major money mistakes have you made in your life? Which of these money mistakes was the worst <laughs> in your eyes? Please let me know in the comments below. This is Andy Hill from Marriage, Kids, and Money, signing off. Carpe diem.